So Trevor is a Montrealer from Calgary, I think, right west. He's a Montrealer now. That's all that matters. Um, he is the host um, and runs the Plateau Astro, uh, which is based out of Montreal. It's very much of an independent kind of initiative for everyday people to kind of get excited about astronomy. Uh, so all of us, normal people, Trevor Expert, going to get us excited. Um, and we're going to share his website with you as well, because he's also a great um, presenter and likes to go and play with kids as well and teach them about astronomy. So he has a great website we'll share with you where you can contact him and have a workshop or come and talk to your school, your kids, etc. But I am going to zip it and I'm going to pass it over to Trevor. Trevor, thanks so much for joining us today. This is a true, 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 true honor to have you here and to share with our um, our community here, the Anglophone community of Quebec. So take it away. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, yes, from a small town called Drayton Valley, just southwest of Edmonton. But you got the Alberta part correct, and that's mostly the, the important, important part. I'm going to share my screen, so just make sure this is good. And everybody can hear me? Uh, okay. All good? Okay. Good, good. Um, yeah, so thanks again so much for for uh, for 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 having me. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will be a lot of fun for you. So, um, yeah, my name is my name is Trevor, and as Chris was was saying, I, I run a one person little company. I've been running it for the last six years uh, or so. It's called Plateau Astro. If you live in Montreal, you can guess what neighborhood I lived in when I made this. Uh, so yes, I do I do workshops. So mostly teaching people just sort of basics of, of astronomy and space. I'm not teaching about black holes or nebula or, you know, no math formulas or anything like that. It's really just getting people outside, bringing in their smartphones or their tablets and teaching them how to enjoy the, the sky, especially if you're in a city. Um, so that's a lot what I do. Um, I also have done some work with CBC the last couple of years, making videos for them, again, teaching about space uh, and, uh, and, and astronomy. And the last, I guess it's about a year and a half ago, I started working with the Canadian Space Agency in their comms department on their on their video team. I stopped working there in July last year, uh, but uh, yeah, worked at the Space Agency uh, just outside of Montreal and got to work with uh, some of the astronauts doing some video stuff with them. So if you you might recognize this space here, this is David Saint Jacques. He went to space about five years ago. I uh, also got to work with. Uh, Jeremy Hansen, uh, who is going to be going to the moon next year, autumn next year, hopefully the deadline stays. Uh, he really does look like Buzz Lightyear uh, in in real real life. Uh, and I guess to allude back to the Alberta stuff, you know, I guess this makes me woody, although the size, the height comparison kind of falls apart there. But uh, he's a great guy. Uh, all of our astronauts are really awesome. I do school presentations. Um, so if you have a need to have your kids taught about space and astronomy. I got lots of different presentations. And the last part I'll just mention, and then we'll get into the meat of this, is a new thing that I've been offering since this year is a mobile planetarium. So this is where I bring an inflatable planetarium into your school gym, or if you have a room uh, big enough. And uh, rather than you hiring out a big old expensive bus and going to the planetarium, I can come there and and we can go inside and hold about 20, 25 kids and learn about space, the solar system, constellations. And I've been recently doing a presentation all about the solar eclipse inside of the dome. Uh, so yeah, it's been very, very, very busy uh, with that. So yeah, plateauastro.com. If you want to read my blog posts or see all the different presentations I do, it's all, it's all there. And I'm also on social media and of course, YouTube. So anyways, enough. Enough advertising. Let's get to it. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about the uh, total solar eclipse coming to Quebec, uh, Montreal area. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, 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 just a little outline about how this is going to go. Uh, uh, first part, it'll last probably about 30, 35 minutes, and then I'll do some questions. So just an outline of what we're going to learn about, uh, sort of like why the kids, your students should care uh, about this. What is a solar eclipse? And then I've got a, a good section teaching about some of the activities you can do with your students and some different tools and software and stuff to, to teach this. 
Uh, then I have a section talking about what we're actually going to be able to see. So a simulation of what you can kind of expect and how to properly use uh, your Eclipse classes uh, that you either have or that you are going to win uh, uh, today. Uh, and then another why section, more for you as an educator. Uh, and then afterwards, as I said, I'll have time for questions and I can answer your specific things. And sometimes that's the funnest part of presentations, honestly. So if you ask sort of any astronomer, you can really get caught into the technical details of an, an eclipse, you know, orbits and the time and how rare eclipses happen and stuff like that. And that's a, definitely one really good way to, to teach about eclipses. I think if you have students that are younger, say six years old, seven years old, eight years old, starting that way kind of might not be the most ideal thing in, in my experience. So what I found kind of kind of useful for, for, for younger students is to teach them like why this is going to be a cool event. Give them sort of the end result, what you're actually going to see rather than immediately talking about the, the intricacies of the eclipse. So I'll throw up with a few cool things that, that kids will sort of pique their interest and get them hooked for it. First kind of cool thing is it's going to get dark in the middle of the day. And when you explain this to kids, how is it going to get, get dark? I find this to be a really great hook for, for, for them to get interested about the eclipse. It's going to get dark in the middle of the day. How weird is that? The second thing is we're going to see some really strange shadows during this day. All the shadows just before and just after the eclipse are going to appear like crescents. Every it's the most bizarre experience you've ever seen. It's very, very strange. And kids find this extremely strange, strange too. Another thing to get kids hooked and interested into this is tell them you're going to see a sunset, but it's going to be a very, very strange, strange sunset. You've seen sunsets before and they all just it's kind of in the west, west direction. This is going to be a 360 degree sunset. It's very, very, very bizarre. The other thing, the temperature will drop a few degrees at the moment of totality or a few minutes before totality. Uh, whether we'll notice that in early April in Quebec, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but that does actually, does actually happen. And the final thing that might actually get them hooked and want to learn more about the eclipse is how some, how some animals will, will react. Some animals might think it's gonna be nighttime and this could be a good way to get them interested into it. So I totally recommend if you're gonna start talking about the eclipse, start with something like this, get them sort of interested in it and then you can go in and explain why this is happening. So that's sort of my my, my first recommendation uh, uh, if you're gonna teach kids about this. All right, I gotta do this just gotta make sure everybody knows the date for when this is gonna happen. When is this gonna happen? It's gonna on Monday, April 8th. You've probably heard this a bunch, but I gotta, I gotta, gotta make sure. So this these times here are for Montreal. So it might be a little bit different if you're outside of Montreal by a few minutes, but it'll be generally about the same. So in Montreal, the eclipse is going to start. This is when the moon is going to start blocking at some of the moon at 2.14 p.m. And then the moon will slowly block out more and more and more of it at 3.26 p.m., the moment of totality. This is when the moon fully blocks it at 3.26 p.m. A few minutes after that, that's you can kind of wind down. Most people will sort of go about their day and, you know, remember the experience, but it'll completely totally end at 4 36 p.m but if you can go to 3 30 p.m i think you're you're in the clear so hands up hands up who has this in their calendar if you're here you probably do if you don't it's a good thing you're here because uh you should already have this in your calendar all right okay good i had to start with that just got to make sure because i've had i've been selling lots of eclipse classes and i've had people tell me it's happening in march or may it's happening april 8th okay all right so let's get into what is a solar eclipse. I'm sure you've heard some of this, but I'll, I'll, I'll hope you show it in some unique ways that you can use to, to teach your students. So um, what is a solar eclipse? There's two different types of eclipses, okay? Two different types of eclipses. So the first one, which probably maybe your students have actually probably seen just because they're a bit more frequent than others, is a lunar eclipse, a lunar eclipse. So this happens at night. 
it is when the moon turns sort of a reddish orange uh, color. Uh, uh, so again, this happens at nighttime. We've had a few of these in, in Montreal and Quebec uh, the last the last couple, couple of years. What we're going to be seeing Monday, April 8th, is a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse. So this happens during during the daytime, and they less likely that they have 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 seen have seen this experience. When I tr try to explain solar eclipses or most space and astronomy things, I find if you just give one perspective, some of the crowd will get it, but not all of it. So what I try to do is I try to show it from a few different multiple multiple perspectives, a few different ways to teach it. So. Uh, I'll show a few different ways of how we can try to explain what is, hap what is happening during a solar eclipse. So here's one way. This is very basic. You could draw this on a whiteboard type of way. We have the sun, and then we have the earth, and then we have the moon. Okay, And the moon goes around the earth. Okay, It takes the moon about one month to go around the earth. And sometimes, sometimes, not every month, but sometimes, some months, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun perfectly all line up, and the Moon blocks out the Sun. It perfectly lines up. And effectively, here on Earth, we see something kind of kind of like, like this, the Sun there and the Moon blocking it out when it perfectly, perfectly lines up. Now, that diagram before could be a little bit too abstract. Uh, some kids, they might... It might click for them, but but some it might be just a little bit too abstract. So uh, an activity that I propose uh, and I find really, really helpful uh, that I've been doing the last few years, it teaches about the solar eclipse. It teaches the movement of the moon around the Earth, but it also teaches about the moon phases. So if you have to teach the moon phases, you can use this uh, activity uh, as well. So what you need for this activity? For relatively cheap, <laughs> okay. A dark room, a light bulb, and basically a, a, a white ball, a white styrofoam styrofoam ball. Uh, so this is the video from gosh six years ago when I thought having a big ridiculous mustache looked good. Okay. We have a light bulb, okay, and that's going to represent the sun, and then my styrofoam ball there that's going to represent the moon, and then your head or what you see with your own eyes is what we're gonna see here on earth, okay? So this is, the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move around like this. Kind of like, there we go. This looks a little bit ridiculous, okay? So your head is the earth and the moon is going around it like this. And what you want the kids to notice, what you want your students to notice is how the light the light from the light, light from the sun, reflects off of the styrofoam ball, off of the moon, and how it changes shape. Okay, so this is sort of an outside perspective here. Here's a video showing what the students should see if they if they're doing this effectively or if they're doing this activity. So, here's a styrofoam ball. There's the light, and you can see the phases of the moon appearing on the styrofoam ball. So we had a little crescent, first quarter moon, and now we're getting to a full moon. And then it start, the light starts receding off of it. And then we get to a last quarter and then waning crescent. And I find this is a super easy, cheap way to really get kids to, 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 to learn the phases, phases of, of the moon. So here's just some photos of the styrofoam ball. But then here's an actual photo I've taken with my telescope of the moon. Okay, hope you're getting the idea. Super easy way to, to teach them the, the faces uh, of the moon. And then also at the end, showing them how the moon is lining up with the sun. This isn't to scale, obviously, but I find this a really, uh, a really great uh, way to do it. One of the things I think young kids get sort of confused when they see the moon like a crescent like this is that they assume the moon is just all that exists of the moon is just this tiny, tiny little crescent. And what this exercise helps to show is that no, the moon is there the entire time. It's a sphere the entire time. But the different ways that we see the shapes of the moon or the phases of the moon depends on how the light sort of hits it.
And I find this to be a really great way to start talking about phase of the moon and 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 and, and the eclipse. Uh, Edu Media, which I think is a resource, some tools uh, that that uh, uh, some of the uh, school districts use, have a good demonstration for this too. So I'll just stop sharing my screen here, and I'll just share another uh, screen. Actually, I'll just share my entire. Okay. Uh, so Edu Media. Share. There we go. Has a bunch of these. I think we'll, we'll put this in the link. Uh, they have one called Sun Earth Moon. Okay, everybody can see my screen. Yeah, good. Okay, cool. And and in this you can it's it's basically another sort of point of view. You're seeing the Earth going around the Sun, and then the Moon going around it uh, like this. It's not showing the phases of the Moon, but you really want just kids to understand. Okay, the Moon is making a circle or an orbit uh, around around the Moon. So I'll stop that, stop that there. So that's the sun, earth, moon uh, uh, activity or uh, tool on the edge media. All right, let's go back to my, my slides here, sec, okay. So uh, another uh, resource I like to show is, is a, a, a great free app. It's free on Android. It's free on uh, iOS, so iPads and, and, and iPhone. So it's called Solar Walk, Solar Walk Light. So I'll show this. And this is just a little bit more detailed. I don't know why I stopped sharing there. And I'll have to share this one more time. OK, so share. There we go. OK, so you should probably be able to see my screen uh, right now. OK. So uh, just give this app just a moment to to show. This is basically a, a a miniature solar system that you can show on your on your phone or or your tablet here. Okay, so everybody can see that. Okay, all right. So you can move uh, move around here, and that shows the the Earth. This isn't to scale, not to scale, uh, but that's kind of not really important at, at this time. So that's the Earth, and we can zoom out. Just pinch to zoom out. Okay. And in the top right, uh, there's a little clock icon. And you can move time forwards and, and backwards. So I'll just zoom out. You can see the sun and the other planets there. Okay. And I'll just move time forwards. And you can demonstrate that the Earth is going, sorry, the moon is going around the Earth. And I find this app really, really useful for, 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 for showing this because you can also move around uh, like this and show where the sun is uh, during this entire entire month long process. So Solar Walk Light, I, I, I've used this for years. I can't believe it's a free app. I I, I feel like a criminal having used it so much, uh, but uh, it's it's a great uh, great free app um, there. And you can also demonstrate that on April eighth, get the the day of the eclipse. You can demonstrate that on that day, the sun, moon, and Earth will all perfectly perfectly line up. So great free free app to use in your uh, in your classroom there. Okay, bring this back. All right. Um, another activity uh, that I find uh, really useful uh, is to show the shadow of the moon on the Earth. Now you probably heard the term uh, path of totality a lot the last few weeks, months, years, maybe. Uh, and so what this activity does is it, it demonstrates this. So I'm going to show a map a little bit later of where you need to be on Earth to be able to see the solar eclipse. But this activity here will show you uh, how to sort of demonstrate why it's just this small, 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 small band. So this, uh, a dark room, dark rooms are great. <laughs> uh, a light bulb, a small ball, just a, a smaller sort of uh, styrofoam ball. Like this, and then a globe, uh, if you uh, if you if you have one. So I'll just sort of. I, I think I can I can change my uh, my uh, my camera here. This is going to be very interesting. Can he do it? Uh, there we go. Everybody can see that. You get a little view of the chaos of my office. Okay. Um, so you can see that there. So I have the globe right there. And then I use a little styrofoam ball like this. 
Okay. And you can use this again, this isn't to scale, but to scale isn't really the, 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 the important thing. You can demonstrate the moon going around, around the globe like this. Okay. Now, so on April 8th, we'll have the earth and we'll have the moon, and then we're going to have the sun. So this is where the light bulb comes on in. Okay. So we turn the light bulb on. Okay. And then again, not to scale, but that's not really important. You could have the moon going around uh, the earth and it's gonna cast this shadow on the earth. I have, I have a pre-recorded video in a second, but I'll just show you this. So you can see that shadow. So this shadow is gonna go across Mexico, the United States and Montreal. And this I find is a really other cool way to show them the path of totality. I'm sorry if this is out of focus for you there, but this is another great activity to show them the path of totality uh, across uh, North America. So hopefully that showed up okay. All right. And I'll just change my camera again. One second. Hopefully that was okay. There we go. He's back. Hopefully. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Uh, let me share my uh, slides one more time. Share. Okay. So just if, if, you, if you didn't see the shadow on that, uh, this is kind of what effectively it looks like. So we have the moon going in front of the earth and the shadow going to here, right across there. And so Quebec, Montreal, other cities, Sherbrooke and all that will be inside of that path of that band of totality, path of path of totality. So much so that I have the next slide that says the words path of totality. So path of totality, let's take a drink of water first. All right, so the path of totality, who's, who's heard that word uh, before, uh, path of uh, totality, yeah? Okay, all right, so path of totality is basically where the eclipse is visible only on this small band, okay? So uh, I showed it there on the, the, the globe uh, before. Uh, here's just a, a recording I took with another piece of software. Uh, the software is a little bit complex, so I'm not going to link out to it, but it's called Gaia Sky if you're, if you're interested. So in this, uh, you should see sort of an orange circle over much of, of North America. And then you'll see maybe hopefully the compression of this video isn't too, too bad there. There's a little red dot there, a little red circle. Okay, If you're within the path uh, sorry, that, that orange circle, you'll see some of the eclipse, some of the eclipse. But if you're in that little red circle, you'll get the entire full show. So I'll just show you what the shadow will look like if you were, you know, orbiting 70,000 kilometers away from the Earth. You'd see something kind of like this. You wouldn't see the red and orange line circles, but you would see the shadow going across the Earth. So this circle, the red circle is going over Montreal, over Quebec. So if you're in the orange part, you're gonna see some of the eclipse, partial eclipse. But if you're in that red part, you're gonna see the entire uh, full show. There is another EduMedia, if you use EduMedia tools, uh, 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 components that they have called the Solar Eclipse 3D. And I think I'm getting pretty good at swapping out my stopping sharing. So I'm, I'm sorry I'm going back and forth quite a bit here, but uh, just give me one sec. Share. Yeah, so they have Solar Eclipse 3D. And this is an, an interactive one that they have here. Okay. Yep, here it is. Okay. So we um, zoom in on the Earth. Okay. So we have the Earth right here, and you can you can scroll in and out, and you can move around. Okay, and so if you zoom out far enough, you'll see the sun and you'll see the moon right here. Okay, and you can see that the light from the sun is you know hitting the back of the, the moon and it's creating a shadow. Okay, so the shadow is hitting the earth and it's over this small, small, small part of the Earth. Okay, so this is another perspective that you can show your show your students uh, 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 what this looks like. Okay, 
So hopefully that also works for you too. Okay, back to my to my slides. Okay. All right. Um, you may have seen some eclipse uh, maps uh, before. Okay, so showing where 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 it is, we sort of saw it on a globe there. I'll show it on a flat map in a second. Edge Media has one of these. Uh, I think it's called Path of the the Eclipse. Here, I'm going to use one. This is because it's the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, it's on the Time and Date website. Uh, if you just Google Time and Dates Eclipse map, uh, it should be fairly easy to look. Sort of something kind of kind of like kind of like this. Uh, and actually, I'll just take a couple minutes to show you what. You, you, you do see some really interesting parts uh, of this. So I'll just, sorry, I, I'm stopping sharing my my uh, my slides all the time, but uh, here we go. Okay. So timeanddate.com. Get this out of the way. Okay. So uh, this, again, shows uh, how much eclipse you're, you're going to get. So if you're in this pink red area, you're going to get the full show. Okay. If you're in the yellowish area, you're only get the partial eclipse. Okay. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So if you're in Mexico, uh, you, you can tap anywhere and it'll show you the location you've tapped on and how much eclipse time you'll, you'll get there. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in on Quebec because that'll probably be the uh, most effective thing to do. Okay. I'm going to start by just, just tapping on a place that is outside of the path of totality. Okay. So I'll, 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 uh, tap to sort of Northern Quebec right up here. So it says here, if you were up there at this location, you're only gonna get a partial solar eclipse and it shows you how much you're gonna get about 81% uh, to, to, to do it, okay? So 81% you'll get some of the show, but not the complete show. So if you, you wanna get over here, as you get closer, closer to the path of totality, you're gonna see this number go up. Okay, so it's 81 now. I'll go a little bit closer. It is 86, okay? Closer, 91, that's a lot of percent. Let's get a little bit closer, 99, okay? But not 100, not 100. If you live anywhere close to the path of totality, you wanna, you wanna get there, okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in here, okay? And I'm gonna show our unique situation here, here in Montreal. I know not everybody's from Montreal here. If you were in Laval, Laval, it's a little bit hard to see the, the path of totality line here at this level, but Montreal is mostly in the path of totality, but not the entire island. If I tap on Laval, you're gonna see that they get 99.95%. So close, so close, but not the entire, the entire show. If I tap, say around the old port in Montreal, now, now it says total solar eclipse, 100%. So you want to be in this path of totality. It'll also tell you how much time the moon is going to block out the sun or the amount of uh, totality. Okay. So if you're in the old port here, you're going to get one minute and 37 seconds. Okay. If you are closer to the edge of totality, you're going to get less. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate that. If you're here, you only need to get one minute and one second. If you are right here, you'll get 37. You can kind of see the number is going down, 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 the closer you get to the, to the edge. And if you're right here, you'll get 15 seconds, not much. Okay. If you are at what we call the center line, the, 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 the part, uh, uh, the middle of the path, that's where you're going to get I'll, I say a lot more, okay? So if you're in Sherbrooke, you're gonna get about three and a half minutes. And you can see this dotted line here, that's the, the, the center line. You're gonna get three and a half minutes of totality. So the closer you are to it, the more time you're, you're, going, to, you're going to get. So this map is really, really useful. I encourage you to, to uh, uh, play around uh, with it to see how much time you're gonna get. If you are say, just outside the path of totality, I totally encourage you to get to get here. Okay, we can talk more about specifics of where you are and stuff a little bit a little bit later. But this tool is 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 uh, really really useful. It'll also show the average cloud cover, which is probably the most depressing part of this uh, 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 <laughs> map here. So I'll just tap on Montreal. 
yeah, there's a one third chance it's going to be a clear day. Okay. But you have to hope there is no other option. So, okay. I'll go back to my, uh, back to my slides here. Okay. All right. So just to demonstrate again, the oddness of, 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 of Montreal, uh, if you're a, a teacher in the Montreal area, you've probably seen uh, this map here. So if you're in Laval, you're not going to get the entire show. But if you're in most of Montreal, if you're in this blue part, you'll get the, the entire the entire show. So I ask you, are you in the path of totality? Put up your hand if you are. I see Cedric going, no. Okay. I, okay. Other people? Yeah. Okay. A few people. All right. Some people, good, 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 good. All right. Okay. Uh, another way to view this is from the perspective of what we're going to see here on Earth. And so there's a great uh, free app, and it's a website too, which is probably easier if you're if you're in a classroom. Um, and you can actually do sort of an interactive replay of what you're actually going to see on that day. So has anybody heard the, the 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 tool Stellarium before? No? Good, good, good. Because if you haven't heard of it, now you have. So it's good. So this is a tool that that it's basically like a mini planetarium uh, in your on your phone and your your tablet and your Mac and or Windows, Linux, and your browser, whatever. Okay. So with this tool, we can actually sort of simulate uh, a lot of things. We can simulate the eclipse, of course, and 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 constellations and, and and all that. So um I think what I'll do is I'll fire up what this website uh actually actually looks like. So there's a free app for iPhone, iPad, Android and all that. It's really 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 quite good. Uh but the website is actually surprisingly great great too. So I will throw this here and share another screen. Sorry, I'm going back and forth with my sharings. Okay. There we go. Slowing web. Somebody put it in the in the chat there. Yeah. So yes, it's Stellarium Web. Okay. Um, so just a, a little bit of setup here first. Uh, on the side, it'll tell you, hey, you can go and download the app. You can just close that with a little hamburger right there. Okay. Then you can take your mouse and you can drag around and look at the the, the sky. Okay. And it'll try to estimate where you are. And I have found frequently that <laughs> it kind of gets the estimation wrong. And especially for this demonstration, I kind of need to have it correct. So in, in, the, in the bottom left, you should be able to see it says near St. Hubert, Riviera de Lou. Okay. If you tap that, you can specify your location. So I'm going to put in, uh, I'll turn off auto location. And I'll search for Montreal. And you can put in your, your, your own, uh, your own, uh, uh, wh wherever you are for this. Okay, so it's going to presume I'm here. And I'll go use this location. The next thing you can do is, uh, this is a bit of a uh, small aside, you can turn on, on the bottom left here, there's uh, the bottom here, you can turn on and off certain things. So you can turn on constellations. And you can have the names show up and the, sh the shapes uh, of them. And they can, your students can move around, okay? They can also, you can use your two finger scroll and you can scroll in like this to see more stars. Okay, you can zoom out. You can turn on constellation art. Uh, if that's more your style of looking looking at the sky. Okay. And you can, you can tap on the constellation and it'll give you some information about why it's called Aries or why it's called Orion. Okay. I'm gonna turn those off because Here's what I would like you to to do. You can change the time for any time you like. Okay, you could you could have students you know put in the 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 day that they were born and see what the sky was look like, what the sky looked like. What I'm going to do in the bottom right, there's a little time and date switchery uh, switch thing here. Okay, and here we can put in the exact date, and exact time of the eclipse for your for your area. So I'll, I'll, I'm just going to change the, the the time here to be, say, 2, 2 p.m. Okay, 2 p.m. And it's on March 12th, 
right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll move this to uh, April 8th. Okay, so let's move the time to April, April 8th. Okay, so I'm about April 6th right now, and you might want to sh show this to your students to show the movement of, of, of the moon here, okay? You can see that the moon on April 6th, two days, two days before the eclipse, little, little, little tiny crescent moon in the sky there, okay? Okay, and there's the sun up there. And if we move the date to April, April 7th, the moon gets a little bit closer, to the sun, and then April 8th, we can zoom in and you can see the sun and the moon are lined up, okay? So I have it set for just a few minutes before the eclipse actually starts, okay? So I'll, uh, another thing you do is you can tap on the thing you wanna focus on. So I've, I've tapped on the sun and there's a little target thing just right here. If you tap that, it'll keep it centered the entire time. And I'll move time forward. So 1401 or 205, 209. I'll actually zoom in a little bit more. 211 and 214 in Montreal, the moon will start blocking out, blocking out the sun. So you can have your students play with this to get an idea of like, what is the exact time it's all going to happen uh, for their for their location, and uh, kind of simulate what they're going to see on on that day. Now this is you know, an approximation, okay? And it, it, it'll look much more stunning than in a browser window when it actually happens. Uh, but this could be a really cool interactive way to teach your students what is what is actually what is actually going on, and you can demonstrate how it'll get dark for for several minutes. So Solarium Web, uh, great free free tool. Yeah, you can use it on any device, a tablet or a phone. And there's also the free uh, uh, apps for it as well on Android and iOS. Okay, so uh, we're doing good for time. We're doing okay, doing good. Okay, all right, good. All right, so uh, this part. Okay, what are we actually going to going to to uh, to to see? On, on this day, okay? And how, 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 how should your students actually, actually see it, okay? First thing we said at the top, you know, you need Eclipse classes to to to, to do this. Uh, obviously we are gonna give away some uh, here, but hopefully you have some sort of situation lined up for that. And even if it's not an Eclipse, it's fun to just look at the sun on a bright, clear day with the Eclipse classes. It's really, really quite cool. Again, here are the times for Montreal. It might be a little bit different if you're just outside of Montreal. It'll start at 2.14. That's where the moon blocks it just a little bit. And for the course of about an hour and 12 minutes, it'll slowly do more and more and more and more. After totality, uh, <laughs> that's when it's sort of... Wind. You can keep on watching if you want. That's for the hardcores, I bet. But, but uh, it'll completely stop blocking the sun at 4.36 uh, p.m. What I've done is I have made a video. This is on my YouTube channel, uh, 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 and I narrate the entire thing. But what I did is I, I've, I've made a panorama, a 360 panorama of uh, a building in, in Montreal to show what it'll kind of look like. So which direction it'll it'll look, and uh, at what time you should have your eclipse glasses uh, on. At totality, you can take your eclipse glasses uh, off. So this video helps to helps to 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 show that here. So um, uh, I have up at the top the directions having your eclipse glasses on. Okay, you don't need only if you're looking at the sun. If you're if you're just looking around, you don't need you don't you no you don't need to walk around uh, with your eclipse glasses on the entire time. Only when you're looking up at the sun, though that would be an interesting challenge to have your eclipse glasses on the entire time. Okay, so at two fourteen, uh, uh, in, in the top left here, it shows what the sun, how it's being eclipsed. And then uh, this is a wide view of what we're actually gonna, gonna see. So 2.14, we can say first contact and the moon starts blocking out the sun. And I've sped it up here. We're not gonna be here for two hours, don't worry. Uh, keeps on blocking more and more and more of it. 
Okay, so we're at about almost 3 p.m. here. And it'll feel like an ordinary day until at about 3.05. And this is when it'll actually start getting visibly darker. You'll actually start to notice it getting darker uh, and, and darker. At about 3.10, 3.15, you might actually start to feel the temperature start to drop. And if you're high up enough, you can actually start to see a 360 degree sunset uh, starting to come uh, in, into view. Just a few minutes before, or about five or six minutes away, okay? You have to have your eclipse glasses on at this point, but at 326 and about four, 326 and 40 seconds in Montreal, eclipse happens. You can take off your eclipse glasses for this part, and this is totality. So what you'll see is uh, the moon blocking out the sun. And it'll base, I've traveled to see it, but it's been cloudy both times. So third time charm. It'll look like basically a black hole in the sky. And around this black hole, you'll see what we call the solar corona. Okay, so it's sort of the flares and the, sol uh, the, the flares of the sun. Two really cool things to point out to your students. At this time, you, at the top left, you're gonna notice a really bright dot. And at the bottom right, you're gonna see an even brighter dot. So the top left, you're gonna be able to see the planet Jupiter. And in the bottom right, you're gonna be able to see the planet Venus uh, with the naked eye. You don't need a telescope or anything uh, uh, for this part. This is so cool, okay? Even though it was cloudy when I went and saw it in 2017, I saw just enough that I could see, I think Jupiter and I think it was Venus back then too. Seeing them out in front there, it was super, super cool. Um, this in Montreal will last about 90 seconds or so, but if you're in Sherbrooke, totality will last about three and a half minutes. Okay. So it depends where you are. Okay. Um, again, you can have your eclipse glasses off, uh, for, for this, this part here. I think I have it in real time. So I'm just going to speed up and eventually the moon keeps on moving, moving and end of totality. And it'll get bright again. You'll you'll kind of sense, oh, okay, it's getting too bright. And then you got to put your eclipse glasses, eclipse glasses uh, on. Uh, my partner tells me she's seen an eclipse before. There's you have a natural sort of. You'll know when to put your eclipse glasses uh, uh, back on. So put your eclipse glasses back on, and then for the next hour and some change, uh, you'll uh, see this. But I presume by that time, most people will be on their way back, way way back home. Um, what if you're not in the path of totality? What if you're in Laval? Okay. Uh, you will get 99% totality. And that sounds like a lot of percent, uh, but it is completely night and day, the, 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 the difference. What you would see in Laval is something, and not just Laval, if you're not in the path of totality, uh, I mean, you'll see something kind of like this. Okay. Again, this is just a simulation. Uh, but it's not going to be the complete, the complete experience. You'll get tantalizingly close, but it's not the, the same experience. So Montreal or path of totality, you'll see this and you'll be able to take your eclipse glasses off, but in Laval and other places outside, you won't be able to. And if you're that close, you should make, you should, you should, it should be illegal to live that close and not be in the path of totality, but I don't make laws. Okay, so you need to keep your solar glasses on the entire time if you are not in the path of totality. So this slide is an instruction, uh, get to the path of totality. You've basically been given a gift uh, to have been this close to the path of totality. So don't like do it. <laughs> All right, last thing, last thing, the last why. Why is this so special? Um, we started to try to get kids hooked Okay, the why there. This is more for like adults, but if you have old enough students, this is something you might be able to explain to them and they might be able to grok. So here we have the sun and we have the moon. Okay, and when you look at the sun in the sky with your eclipse glasses, and then you look at the moon, they kind of look the same size uh, in, in the sky. Okay, they, they, they appear, you know, the same size in the sky. Are, is the sun and the moon the same size? 
in absolute terms. No, of course not. No, 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 no. The sun is is gigantic, and the moon is is very, 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 very small. Okay, if you put them side by side, why does the sun look the same size as the moon? The sun is very far away. Okay, it's so far away that it appears to shrink in size and appears the exact same size. Now, this only, 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 only happens on Earth. And you might think, okay, like Mars has moons. This probably, ha that phenomenon happens there too. No, it doesn't. Jupiter, Jupiter has a lot of moons. Probably chances are it happens. Nope, it doesn't. Saturn has a lot of, nope, doesn't happen there. Uranus, no. no. Earth is the only place in the solar system that has moons and the sun and the moon appear the exact same size. This gives me chills, this, 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 this idea, okay? To hammer this home, okay? We have some rovers going around on Mars, okay? And sometimes one of their moons, which are quite small, will pass in front of the sun and it'll look kind of like, like this. So that's the sun. And this is one of Mars's moons and it's much, much, much smaller, okay? And this is basically what an eclipse, we call it a transit, an eclipse looks like on Mars. And you notice it doesn't fill, doesn't cover the entire, the entire sun, okay? So this is what an eclipse would look like on Mars, not the same stunning effect, okay? So this only happens on Earth, and this won't always be the case, okay? So in the past, the moon was actually closer uh, uh, to the Earth and it appeared bigger in the sky. So you got something kind of looking like like that for an eclipse. And it would, it would totally cover it, but you wouldn't get that same dramatic solar flare corona uh, effect. In the future, millions of years from now, the moon is going to be a little bit further away from the Earth and it's not going to block it out. You're going to get what they call an annular eclipse and you won't be able to take your eclipse glasses off if you're still alive 50 million years from now, okay? So millions of years from now, you won't be able to, to, to see a solar eclipse the same way we do now. Only at this time does this happen. And to me, it is insane that humans can appreciate that fact. The one planet that has human beings on it that can appreciate that fact are here for it. And we can actually, actually, actually see that. So that part, that gives me chills. And I wish people learned about that fact a bit more. The last, last thing I'll do, and then we'll go into questions. I'm sorry, I'm probably going a little bit long here. The last time a solar eclipse happened in Montreal, Quebec, was in 1932. And the next time there's going to be a solar eclipse is going to be the year 2106, okay? So the way I've been thinking about this last few weeks is here's sort of a, you know, a line of time, okay? We are here. It's 2024. The last eclipse was in 1932, so 92 years ago. So there's, there might be, I don't know this for sure, but there might be some 97 year old right now who was alive during the 1932 eclipse. Again, I don't know this, but that's, it happened. It could have happened, okay? He could have, they, or he or she could have been five years old and saw that eclipse. The next eclipse is gonna happen 2106, okay? 82 years from now. There's a chance that you might have a, a student who, is five years old now. And when they turn 87, be able to see that eclipse. And so to me, I've been thinking about how the sort of arc of time, how you know the things that we do in the next few weeks might trickle down into the next century. So I hope that you get your students excited uh, uh, for, for, the, for the eclipse uh, because it's awesome. <laughs> That's all I've got, okay. Um, uh, I've talked long here. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I'll take a drink of water and then, um, yeah. well, thank yeah, you, sure. Trevor. Wow. That's, I love that last part. I mean, looking at that timeline, wow. Like that, uh, that speaks a lot of how amazing this is. And it is a once in a lifetime for most of us experience that we'll ever, we'll get to have and to be able to appreciate it with our students and our families and, you know, it's just like, wow. Um, so yeah. we did have uh, a couple of questions. Um, sure. And then we'll we'll get to our raffle of, of handing out a couple of glass sets of glasses for you guys. Um, Liana, what, what was the question from the, did we get any from the? Yeah. 
I have two questions here. So uh, one of them is from Sue. She asked pretty early on in the presentation, you mentioned, uh, Trevor, that the total, total solar eclipse would be visible from Montreal. Um, yep. But I think Sue lives in a B2B. And so she's wondering what, how to find the information uh, for when it's going to start there and when it's going to end there, because it might be different from Montreal. Yeah. Um, so you can use that, that same time and date uh, website. I'm not sure if anybody put that in the chat, but I will put that in there uh, right now. Thank you. Um, there we go. Okay. And then I'll share my screen. So I'll, I'll uh, share. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I have it on 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 Montreal now. Uh, a B two B. Uh, oh, it, I'm a I truly am from. A B. How do you spell? That? Yeah, that's exactly H it. The first one there, I think. Okay. A okay. B I T I B I. A B T B. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. A B two B. All right. So, um, yeah, so a B2B is not in the path of totality. So you can see that's out, outside of it. Um, so it'll get 84% of it. Uh, here it'll show uh, when it'll start. So it'll start at 2.11 uh, p.m. maximum. Maximum just means like the, the maximum that the sun will be blocked out. You're not going to get totality, but it's still quite cool. And in fact, at 84%, um yeah shadows will still do interesting things it it might get a little bit darker i think you kind of got to be about at least 90 percent to see that but maybe um and um yeah i think i think uh it, it's yeah it would be great if you could be, but i know that's quite far north so you'll be able to do that and then um yeah the end time is is uh 4 30 um there so hopefully that answers the question cool question there so a follow-up question to that, if she's out of totality and out of the partial area, then are yeah. glasses still essential? Yeah, so uh, if you're in the partial area, you, you still need um, you still need your, your, your Eclipse glasses uh, to be able to, to see it, yeah. That's right, sorry, I misspoke. She is still in the partial area, so yes okay. for glasses, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Perfect. The second question from the chat was from Ashley. She said, at what percentage should be, we be wearing eclipse glasses? And that's word for word. She may have to clarify what that means, but at yeah. what percentage should you be wearing eclipse glasses? Hmm. Okay. I think I understand. Okay. I, I can see how people might interpret this in, in different ways. So like we were just saying before, if you're in the partial zone, you need to have your eclipse glasses and have them on to to look at the at at the sun. Um, if you are in the path of totality, and you're wondering, people said I can take off my eclipse glasses at some point. When when can I do that? You can only do that at a hundred percent totality. So you could be at ninety nine percent. You still need them on. Ninety nine point five percent. Still need them on. Ninety nine point nine percent. Still need them on. It's not until a hundred percent when the moon totally blocks out the sun that you can see uh, that you can take your your eclipse glasses eclipse glasses off. Uh, and then depending on how far into the path of totality you are, uh, will depend how long you can you can keep them keep them off for off for. I, I would recommend um, you 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 know okay have them on have them on and basically you'll. You'll have them on, and then it'll sort of get really dark all of a sudden. And like, oh, okay, that must be the time of totality. Then you can take it off, and then have your brain basically melt uh, for however long totality is for. And then it'll kind of get br brighter, and then you're like, oh, okay, now must be the 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 the, the time. So basically, have them ready to go to have them back on. Yeah, something sort of like that. Or I mean, you can turn your you can turn your head. You do have right. a. A, a neck and you can move your you can move your head <laughs> and then put them back on and and then then uh and i then heard look. trevor it's it's similar to like you don't stare at the sun without sunglasses or glasses on right like it's just and and this will be much more intense right because the, the 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 sun's going to be amplified coming around the sun uh moon. um uh amplified i i'm not sure i would say amplified i think um yeah, how to phrase that? 
Uh, yeah, it's it's not going to be. I, I, I think one of the things that uh, we're, 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 we we had to sort of fight against is people thinking that it's an eclipse and therefore the it, it's like a laser beam, you know, the, the the sun's light as if it's getting magnified. It's like it's it. Don't worry. Like you can walk outside if you don't have eclipse glasses, like you're not going to get fried. It's not some alien laser beam or anything like that. It's just like an ordinary day. It's it's a it's a sunny day today. It'll basically be like that. But if you want to look at it, that's where you need to 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 have the have the have the glasses on. It, there's no need to hide the children underneath their desks or put them down in the uh, bunkers or anything like that. This is not a Bay of Pigs uh, <laughs> nuclear war incident. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right on. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have well, another let's... question. Sorry, Chris. Okay. Do we have time make for it, one more? Make it quick because we want to wrap up. Yeah, it's a before. great question. I want to know for myself what the answer is. So if we wanted to travel to Sherbrooke, because that's got the longest, uh, I guess, the duration of the the, the total eclipse, right? Uh, yeah. How we get there, because highways are going to be crazy, right? So yeah. are people camping the night before? Like, what's the I, best? I, I can only say from my experience in, in Nashville. So I went in 2017, and... I think the population in Nashville is about 500,000 normally. The day of the eclipse, the population in Nashville was like 1.1 million. Nashville was in the center line um, uh, there. Okay. Uh, what will Sherbrooke be like? I'm sure a lot of people will be will be there. Probably not as much as some of the the, the Italian, um, United States locations, just because people have to have passports and stuff to go to go there. So it might not be as crazy as Nashville. I would not plan to start driving at say 12 noon. <laughs> I I would I I would if you have somebody on boots on the ground in Sherbrooke, ask them maybe the few days before it's like, what's it kind of like? You're you're not gonna get a hotel room. If you haven't booked a hotel room now, uh sorry, <laughs> you're, you're probably not gonna get a hotel room in Sherbrooke now, I presume. Uh so yeah, you might want to drive there the night before, honestly. Yeah. A recommendation might be too is if parents are with their kids, find a spot, you know, like ahead of time, seek out your spot so that you kind of know where to go, who you're going with um, and have fun with it. You know, like it's going to be an amazing experience. Why not do it, you know, off ME or in the community? Um, but definitely go and find your spot ahead of time and get there a bit early because, yeah, there's going to be traffic up the wazoo. Yeah, yeah. And you don't need to go to like too Sherbrooke. Like you can be like, Right. outside of, of 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 Sherbrooke and and probably find just like a a, a road <laughs> you know you can you can still get the best experience there yeah that's it cool cool well Trevor this has been awesome guys so Trevor thanks so much this has been super enlightening and man I'm excited now um we shared tons of resources guys uh you have Trevor's stuff bring him into your schools he, they'll you'll have tons of fun your kids with this guy uh please Let's tap into his knowledge a little bit more um, and enjoy it. This is a once in a lifetimer. Um, so don't be afraid. Um, be informed and enjoy this thing that you'll, your kids will talk to their kids about. So <laughs> thanks a lot, Joe. It's been great. And thank all you right. all for uh, coming in and uh, have a great day.